Welcome to another video. In this video you will learn everything you need to know about implied volatility, what implied volatility rank is and why it matters. So let's get started. First of all, what is implied volatility? Implied volatility can be derived from options pricing models such as the Black-Scholes options pricing model. It can be thought of as the expected likelihood of certain price changes in the underlying asset. But what does that mean? To understand this, let's break down what goes into an options price. The Black-Scholes formula uses the following variables to calculate an options price. The underlying price, the strike price, the expiration date, the risk-free rate, and implied volatility. The first two factors are quite obvious because they determine the intrinsic value of an option. The expiration date also makes a lot of sense, as more time till expiration gives your position more time to work. Thus, time till expiration should definitely affect the price of an option. The risk-free rate only has a very small effect on an option's price and doesn't change significantly over short periods of time. Therefore, it can be ignored for now. Last but not least, the volatility of the underlying asset should also affect the option's price because more volatile assets tend to give an option's trader more opportunity to profit from price swings, whereas unvolatile assets have limited trading opportunities. For instance, a far out of the money option is far more likely to become in the money if the underlying asset is very volatile than if it's not. Therefore, volatility is one of the factors used to calculate a theoretical options price. However, as you might have noticed, it's fairly easy to observe and measure the underlying price, strike price and time till expiration but it's not as straightforward to measure the volatility of a security, especially not the future volatility. That's why models such as the Black-Scholes model use a formula to determine the implied volatility from the options price instead of the options price from the implied volatility. An options price can be observed in the markets together with all the other factors except for volatility. From all this you can calculate a theoretical volatility value. This volatility value is implied from the options price, therefore it's called implied volatility. So when you hear in some financial news that options traders are expecting upcoming volatility, what they're really saying is that the volatility implied by the current option prices or the implied volatility is relatively high. Note that implied volatility is not the same as historical volatility. Historical volatility is the past actual volatility and it does not affect the options price, whereas implied volatility does. Furthermore, implied volatility is a purely theoretical value. Therefore, implied volatility values often differ from the actual volatility values over certain time periods. Hopefully, this helps you understand what implied volatility is. But why is implied volatility even important? First of all, it's one of the main factors affecting an options price. This alone is one reason why you, as an options trader, should pay attention to IV. Furthermore, implied volatility can give you insight into what kind of volatility the market is expecting. You can compare the expected volatility to your own analysis and potentially build a position around the difference in these two. An options trader should always look at implied volatility as well as the underlying trading price, expiration date and strike price before putting on a position. It's also possible to use implied volatility to calculate the expected price range of an underlying asset until the expiration date. To understand this, let's first take a look at a normal distribution diagram. Depending on which model you use, you might assume that stock price changes are distributed like this. That would mean that 68% of the time prices only change slightly 
and the bigger a price move is, the less likely it becomes. A one standard deviation move or less happens about 68% of the time, a two standard deviation move or anything less happens about 95% of the time, and so on. This isn't necessarily a very realistic distribution for stock prices, because bigger moves happen far more often than they should according to a normal distribution. Furthermore, prices can move more to the upside than they can to the downside. Nevertheless, a normal distribution is commonly used and it helps to understand what the expected move of a stock is. If you use the normal distribution, you can calculate the expected move of an asset through this formula. One standard deviation equals plus or minus implied volatility times the underlying price times the square root of the time till expiration divided by 365. Two standard deviations can be calculated by multiplying the one standard deviation move by two and so on. Implied volatility is normally quoted on an annualized basis. That's why we divide the time till expiration by 365 to get the expected range until the expiration date. Let's look at an example to clarify all this. Stock XYZ is trading at $100. We will first look at an option with 30 days left till expiration and an implied volatility of 40%. So the one standard deviation range over the next 30 days is plus minus 0.4 times 100 times the square root of 30 divided by 365. This is about plus minus 11.5, which means the one standard deviation range over the next 30 days is $88.5 to $111.5. This means that the markets expect XYZ's price to stay between about $88 and $112 over the next 30 days with about 68% probability. A two standard deviation move would be up to $123 or down to $77. Now let's take a look at the same stock with the same implied volatility but 60 days instead of 30 days till expiration. The one standard deviation range would now be about $84 to $116. The two standard deviation range would be $68 to $132. This makes sense because XYZ can obviously move much more in 60 days than it can in 30 days. Note that all of this assumes that the distribution of stock prices is normal. This is not necessarily a very realistic assumption. Therefore, in practice, other distributions such as the log normal distribution or other ones are used much more commonly. Nevertheless, this simplified explanation of the expected move should give you a good idea of what the expected move is and how you can use it for your trading. Luckily, you will never really have to calculate the expected move yourself as most good broker platforms such as Tastyworks will calculate it for you. Last but not least, let's break down what implied volatility rank is. By now, you have hopefully realized that implied volatility is an important factor to look at when trading options. When implied volatility is high, options are priced higher, and when implied volatility is low, options are priced lower. But how do you know if implied volatility is high or low? For instance, if stock XYZ has an option with an implied volatility of 40% and stock ABC has an option with an implied volatility level of 30%, what does that mean? Just because the absolute implied volatility value of XYZ is higher than of ABC, we can't just assume that its implied volatility is higher relative to itself. Let me give you a more specific example to clarify this. Let's say XYZ is usually a very volatile stock and has an average implied volatility of 70%. But now the IV dropped down to 40%.
whereas ABC tends to have an IV level of around 20% most of the time, but now its implied volatility has gone up to 30% then this means that ABC's implied volatility is relatively high and XYZ's implied volatility is relatively low, even though XYZ's absolute volatility is greater than ABC's. I hope that this shows that it's very hard to compare the implied volatilities of different securities because different securities can have very different trading characteristics. To solve this problem, we can use implied volatility rank. IV rank looks at the past year of implied volatility data of a stock and then tells you how the current level of IV is relative to the past 365 days. IV rank is always a value between 0 and 100, 100 being the highest and 0 the lowest in level of implied volatility over the past year. Here is a brief example. Stock ABC has an IV rank of 20. This means that its implied volatility is relatively low because it has been much higher throughout the past year. Therefore, you can assume that ABC's options are relatively cheap compared to past times. If, on the other hand, IV rank would be at 100, you know that ABC's implied volatility has never been higher over the past year and therefore this could be a good time to sell options because they are very expensive. Summed up, implied volatility rank brings some context to implied volatility. Here is the formula that is most commonly used to calculate IV rank. The current IV level minus the 52-week IV low divided by the 52-week IV high minus the 52-week IV low. And all of this is multiplied by 100 to get the IV rank. Note that some brokers often filter out very extreme implied volatility values from the past 52 weeks so that IV rank isn't skewed or distorted by these values. And don't worry, you won't have to calculate this yourself, because once again, most good brokers will do this for you. Tastyworks, for instance, even allows you to scan and filter securities by IV rank. This is one of the easiest ways to find securities with very low or very high implied volatility values. If you currently do not have a broker platform that supports IV rank or other features related to implied volatility, I personally highly recommend Tastyworks. They are my favorite broker and you can check out my full review of Tastyworks in the description below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I really hope that this video could help you understand implied volatility and how implied volatility rank works. Make sure to subscribe for more trading related videos and see you in the next one.